in this module we will discuss about various dilemmas that the RBI has to face since the Indian economy has opened up to the world. In the process, the techniques and operating procedures have shifted from direct and administered instruments towards combination of market oriented and indirect instruments. The exchange rate channel is also expected to play a significant role in the conduct of monetary policies. The monetary authorities feel that the output response to monetary policy operating through interest channels is stronger and more persistent than through credit channel or through quantity variables. In this module, you will be able to understand the real working conditions of the RBI, know about the operating procedures and instruments, know about different dilemmas of monetary authority. Apart from the two important goals, that is price stability and growth, there has been a conscious attempt on the part of Reserve Bank in recent years to maintain orderly conditions in the foreign exchange market and to curb destabilizing and self-fulfilling speculative activities. This has assumed strategic importance for the sustainability of the external sector in the face of growing cross-border capital flows into the economy. With the increasing order of domestic and international financial integration, exchange rate expectations do impact on the domestic stance of monetary policy and hence the significance of inflation. In the transitional phase, however, given the exchange market imperfections, the exchange rate objective may occasionally predominate due to emphasis on the avoidance of undue volatility. In fact, sometimes, as was the case recently, it could be the most dominant reason for short-term monetary policy adjustments. In a broader framework, the objective of monetary policy in India continues to be price stability and growth. These are pursued inter alia through ensuring credit availability with stability in the external value of the rupee as well as the overall financial stability. The relative emphasis on any one of the objectives is governed by the prevailing circumstances. The conduct of monetary policy in India has traditionally proceeded with the help of an intermediate target which the central bank could influence directly and which bears a reasonably close relationship with the ultimate objectives. The Reserve Bank of India sets indicative broad money M3 expansion targets in line with the expected rate of growth of GDP and a tolerable level of inflation. The broad money target is also supported by a number of other indicators such as movement in interest rates exchange rate and availability of credit to productive sectors of the economy. Monetary target is premised on a stable demand function for money. The order of the reserve money expansion, however, has to be consistent with the likely fiscal and external payments positions since the main sources of 
reserve money expansions are net RBI credit to the government and net foreign exchange assets. The targeted M3 expansion is publicly announced through governor's statement on monetary and credit policy. The broad money target is also supported by a number of other indicators such as movement in interest rates, exchange rate and availability of credit to productive sectors of the economy. Monetary target is premised on a stable demand function for money. In the Indian context, a number of earlier studies on the demand for money have demonstrated that it is stable. Dr. Rangarajan demonstrated that money demand equations provide reasonable predictions of average changes in prices over a medium term horizon of 4 to 5 years though not necessarily on a year to year basis. In a sense, the concern was with the long run stability of the money demand functions in terms of its most proximate determinants that is real GDP rather than its short term behavior. Most recent studies in the RBI examined the stability of the money demand equations using a number of alternative procedures. While these tests showed parameter shifts, they did not point to parameter instability. In the 1990s, the monetary targets were set either as point targets or in a narrow range implying a scope for missing point targets. But it has to be recognized that a wider range would question the creditability diluting the very objective of targeting. The pressure on monetary expansion in the earlier part of the targeting exercise emanated from the monetization of fiscal deficit and later on from capital inflows. During the period 1985 to 1992, the net RBI credit to the central government accounted for over 96 percent of the monetary base which was reduced to about 65 percent in the subsequent period during 1993 to 1998 with corresponding increase in net foreign exchange assets of the RBI. Although the practice of automatic monetization of the budgetary deficit was done away with, effective from April 1997, it can significantly reduce the pressure on monetization only if the size of the central government's market borrowing program is kept within reasonable limits. However, there is a qualitative difference since the RBI has some flexibility now in respect of the extent of its support to the government borrowing program. With the increasing market orientation of the financial structure and international capital flows, monetary policy responds to developments on an ongoing basis in an administered 
interest rate and exchange rate regime. The quantity variables dominated and transmitted monetary policy impulse. However, external and financial sector reforms have since enhanced the sensitiveness of quantity variables to their market determined price that is interest rate and exchange rate. It must be recognized that in recent times the emphasis has also been on closely monitoring different indicators apart from relying on the intermediate target. For aiming at the intermediate target that is broad money, the underlying operating target is reserve money, particularly the bank's reserves, while the supplementary operating target is a short term interest rate proxied generally by the overnight call money rates. In India, monetary policy has always emphasized the objectives of price stability and growth. Apart from these two important goals, there has been a conscious attempt on the part of the Reserve Bank in recent years to maintain orderly conditions in the foreign exchange market, curb destabilizing and self-fulfilling speculative activities, and to maintain overall financial stability. The reforms in the monetary and financial sectors have enabled the RPI to expand the array of instruments at its command. The operational target of monetary policy continues to be the bank's reserves, which is controlled by changes in reserve requirements affected mainly through the instrument of the cash reserve ratio, CRR. However, the use of the CRR as an instrument of monetary control is sought to be de-emphasized and the liquidity management in the system is increasingly undertaken through open market operations, both outright and repos. In view of the overall downward movement in the CRR, except on occasions of exchange rate volatility, the excess liquidity in the system is mopped up by outright sales of government securities by the RBI. Over the reform period, the market absorption of government securities was facilitated by reforms in the government securities market which ensured market related rates of interest and thus some of the basic conditions were provided for developing a secondary market. The short term liquidity management is also aided by the conduct of repos on a regular basis. Usually the RBI conducts repos for a maturity of up to 14 days which is the cycle for reserve requirements. Recently the RBI has been conducting 3-4 days fixed rate repos to absorb very short term liquidity and to even out money market rates especially overnight call money rates. The repo rates and the amounts tendered in the repo auctions apart from reflecting liquidity conditions provide a floor for the overnight call money rates. In the event of tight liquidity conditions, the RBI's liquidity support to primary dealers that is PDs enables it to directly intervene in the market thereby moderating pressures on the overnight call money rates. The RBI has also reactivated 
the bank rate in April 1997 as a reference rate and as a signaling device to reflect the stance of monetary policy. The interest rates on different types of accommodation from the RBI including refinance are linked to the bank rate. The activation of the bank rate endowed the RBI with an additional instrument. It must be noted that the announcement impact of bank rate changes has been pronounced on the prime lending rates of commercial banks. RBI can manage liquidity through cash reserve ratio, open market operations in the short term, conduct of repos on a regular basis, bank rate, refinance windows. Until recently, the RBI provided two types of refinance facilities to banks, export credit refinance and general refinance. Thus, the ILAF provides a mechanism by which liquidity would be injected at various interest rates and absorbed when necessary at the fixed repo rate so that the volatility in the money market is minimized and the market operates within a reasonable range. At present, there is no formal corridor for market interest rates. But the bank rate has often provided an upper bound and the fixed repo rate provided the lower bound. In a sense, an informal corridor exists for short term interest rates and the introduction of ILAF has facilitated the evolution of this corridor. The experience with the movements in the interest rates and the exchange rate in the last two years has increasingly reflected the integration among various market segments. The interest rates of major market instruments that is 91 day and 364 day treasury bills, commercial paper and certificates of deposits in the recent period show some correlation with a reasonable speed of adjustment which augurs well for some element of targeting of interest rates in the conduct of monetary policy. Let us now discuss how RBI manages liquidity at the short end in the form of ILAF. Liquidity is injected by the RBI through CLF to banks, export credit refinance to banks and liquidity support to PDs. Absorption of liquidity will continue to be through fixed rate repo that is at the repo rate announced on a day to day basis. These are supplemented by OMOs in government-dated securities and treasury bills by the RBI. Thus, the ILAF provides a mechanism by which liquidity would be injected at various interest rates and absorbed when necessary at the fixed repo rate so that the volatility in the money market is minimized and the market operates within a reasonable range. Now we will discuss different dilemmas posed by monetary management. First. The basic dilemma arises out of the trade-off between growth and inflation. Although a consensus has emerged on the basis of empirical evidence that in the long run there is no trade-off between employment and inflation. Secondly, even a moderate inflation rate poses a dilemma in an open economy. If the domestic inflation rate of an economy, however low it may be, is higher than the average inflation rate of its trading partners, it puts pressure on the exchange rate. Thirdly, in a dynamic setting, when the financial markets are continually evolving and payment systems and technology are changing, one may not find a clear-cut evidence of stability in the money demand, which is taken as a basis for intermediate targeting and in such circumstances, 
one needs to also look at other relevant indicators. Fourthly, the dilemma that a central bank faces as the manager of public debt and the monetary authority is well known. While the former may require keeping its costs low, the latter may demand a reduction in the extent of government debt that it holds, considering the impact it has on aggregate expenditures and thus on demand. Fifthly, the conflict between the roles of the regulator and as a conductor of monetary policy has often been discussed. RBI may require to reduce the liquidity in the system by raising the rate of interest, but such a rise in the rate of interest could be detrimental to the interests of the weak banks. Finally, in an open economy, the potential conflict between the interest rate and exchange rate objectives could arise when short-term and volatile capital flows occur. As part of financial sector reforms, a number of steps have been taken to enhance the effectiveness of monetary policy, and these include an improvement in the payments and settlement systems, development of a secondary market in government securities with a diversification of the investor base, reduction in non-performing assets of banks, introduction of asset liability management guidelines, and reduction in the overall transaction costs. All the reforms in the monetary and financial sectors may not have the desired results without credible fiscal adjustment, notwithstanding the discontinuation of automatic monetization of fiscal deficit, the responsibility for the management of a large government borrowing program does circumscribe the maneuverability of the monetary policy. The review of monetary policy in the second half of 1990s and after would show the continuation of the perspective and approach adopted in early 1990s. During all these years, apart from macro stabilization, the monetary policy had to shoulder the responsibility of seeing through structural reforms in the financial system. With the growing market orientation, the role of RBI moved away from exercising control and discretion towards becoming an active player in the market through practicing timely and effective intervention to modulate conditions and signal a policy stance. The need for sterilizing the higher level of foreign capital inflows and the swift policy actions to contain the increase and spread of volatility defined the goals, targets and techniques of monetary policy. It had to be ensured that the increased capital flows do not increase money supply so much that the main objective of growth with stability is endangered. The efforts were made to tackle the problem through liberalization of international transactions, prepayment of multilateral debt and sterilization, the last being achieved through the open market sale of government securities by the RBI out of its own portfolio. The RBI now has to operate simultaneously in the domestic money market and foreign exchange market to counterbalance domestic and external sources of monetization. The interlinked world financial markets are posing challenges of rapid contagion to monetary management. The reforms in credit regulation have shifted the focus from micro-regulation to macro-management. This has involved, first, a scaling down of preemptions in the form of statutory stipulations, second, rationalization of priority sector requirements, third, phasing out of directed credit programs, fourth, 
relaxation of balance sheet restrictions to improve the credit delivery system. Fifth, the gradual replacement of cash credit system by a loan system of bank lending. Sixth, phasing out of on-tap treasury bills. And seventh, liberalization of investment norms for banks. The framework of monetary policy has now radically changed due to the policy of financial liberalization and globalization. Increasing globalization has significantly increased risk and uncertainty. In such an environment of interdependent risks, the formulation and conduct of monetary policy has become complex, interdependent and difficult. It has to try to achieve a balance between the benefits of market integration and the minimization of risks of market instability. The objectives of monetary policy are First, to create a competitive environment and orderly conditions in the financial sector while ensuring financial, monetary, economic and price stability along with growth. Second, to ensure timely and adequate availability of credit at reasonable cost to all productive activities and sectors in the economy. Third, to achieve price stability and curb inflationary expectations continue to remain another central objective of monetary policy in India. Let us now discuss in detail the objectives of monetary policy. 1. To create a competitive environment and orderly conditions in the financial sector while ensuring financial, monetary, economic and price stability along with growth. Monetary and credit policy has come to undertake financial stability review by monitoring the following microprudential indicators that is capital adequacy norms, non-performing assets, return on equity and return on assets, bank liquidity indicated by short-term assets divided by short-term liabilities or the absence of maturity mismatch of bank deposits and credit, lending and borrowing interest rates spread for the banks or net interest income to total assets of banks Investment in non-SLR securities like CPs and credit concentration. 2. To ensure timely and adequate availability of credit at reasonable cost to all productive activities and sectors in the economy. Given the role of credit in the economy, and its sensitivity to interest rate changes, the provision of adequate liquidity to meet credit growth and support investment demand in the economy continues to be a core monetary policy objective in India. There has also been a preference for softer interest rates and efforts have been made to impart greater flexibility and simplicity to the structure of interest rates to enhance the lendable funds with the banks in this context. The government draft on funds by fiat has been restricted. Third, to achieve price stability and curb inflationary expectations continue to remain another central objective of monetary policy in India. Following the lead from abroad, inflation targeting has been adopted as an objective of monetary policy in India in the recent past. At the same time, the monetary authorities have recognized the following limitations of and constraints on pursuing a single price stability objective 
which the theory and policy of inflation targeting involves a structural factors and supply side shocks from within and a broad made inflation depend on monetary as well as non monetary factors and therefore the role of monetary policy in inflation outcome is limited the persistence of fiscal dominance implies that the debt management function gets linked up with monetary management functions c the absence of fully integrated financial markets suggests that the interest rates transmission channel of monetary policy is weak the lags in the pass through from the policy rate to bank lending rates constrain the adoption of inflation targeting d the high frequency data requirements on inflation rate for targeting purposes are yet to be met in india aware of these constraints the policy makers in india have chosen a middle ground approach to monetary policy it means that within its strong commitment to price stability it would try to limit the cyclical swings in effective demand in other words the monetary policy has tried to ensure easy liquidity conditions to facilitate the revival of industrial growth while keeping a constant village over the price level in this approach price stability and economic growth become mutually enforcing rather than competing goals involving trade offs between them the monetary policy in coming years cannot be designed with only inflation as a single minded objective the considerations relating to maximizing output and employment weigh equally as price stability upon monetary authorities the techniques and operating procedures have shifted from the direct and administered instruments towards the combination of market oriented and indirect instruments particularly the former since the early 1990s the monetary targeting approach in the market of monetary policy came under stress because of increasing interplay of market forces in determining the interest rates and the exchange rates after financial deregulation the old multiple indicators target and multiple instruments monetary policy has continued in late 1990s and after 2000 the price of credit or interest rate has emerged as an important channel of monetary policy in india further now the exchange rate channel also is expected to play a significant role in the conduct of monetary policy the monetary authorities opine that now the output response to monetary policy operating through the interest rate channel is stronger and more persistent than that through credit channel or through quantity variables similarly the absorption of excess foreign exchange supply in the market 
has led to significant compositional shifts in the RBI balance sheet and reserve money which has necessitated recourse to OMOs also for achieving the goals of monetary policy. At the same time, the monetary authorities have recognized the following limitations of and constraints on pursuing a single price stability objective. A. Structural factors and supply side shocks from within and abroad make inflation depend on monetary as well as non-monetary factors and therefore the role of monetary policy in inflation outcome is limited. B. The persistence of fiscal dominance implies that the debt management function gets linked up with monetary management function. C. The absence of fully integrated financial markets suggests that the interest rate transmission channel of monetary policy is weak. The lags in the past through from the policy rate to bank lending rates constrain the adoption of inflation targeting. D. The high frequency data requirements on inflation rate for targeting purposes are yet to be met in India. In this module, we have learned about the objective, operating targets, and different dilemmas of the RBI. Looking at the monetary policy in the second half of 1990s and after indicates the continuation of the prospective approach adopted in early 1990s. The RBI has become an active player in the market to a timely and effective intervention to modulate conditions and signal a policy stand. Reforms in credit regulation have shifted from micro-regulation to macro-management. The environment of monetary policy has changed because of financial liberalization and globalization. The exchange rate channel is expected to play a significant role in the conduct of monetary policy. This has necessitated the use of open market operations in achieving the goals of monetary policy.